Okay, so this is section 6.2, Law of Cosines. So we have six equations. And these six equations apply to two cases that we haven't, um, you, that we can't solve using the Law of Sines. So they are the case where you're given all three side lengths and you're asked to find all three angles or side angle side where you're given the two sides and the included angle between the two sides. The side side angle or, uh, was the ones that we did with law of sines. Now if uh, given a choice what you do is you you find the angle opposite the largest side first and this will this will also be the largest angle. And if it's obtuse, this will help in getting the correct angles for the other thing. Uh, I just worked through the homework, and I don't really remember having to use that, but I may have done it subconsciously. As far as doing the largest, largest angle first. So keep that in mind um, when you look at the homework. What we may find out is that in some cases it doesn't really matter which angle we do first, but I guess to be on the safe side you should do the longest, the largest angle. That means when you have side, 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 there's really no choice when you have side, angle, side. Now, once you've found one of the angles using the law of cosines, you can use the law of cosines again, or you can use the law of sines to then find the second angle. And once you have two out of the three angles, you could use the law of cosines, you could use the law of sines, or you could use the fact that the sum of the angles, interior angles of a triangle equal 180. And I'll kind of mix it up <coughs> to show you the three different ways. Usually the last angle I'll use that the sum of the angles equals 180 because that's the simplest case. And you know this is called the alternative alternate form, alternative form. This is kind of the standard form. If you solve for the cosine of a algebraically, you'll get this. If you solve for the cosine of b from this equation. So it all depends upon whether you're if you're given all the side information, side side side, you can use these formulas. If you're given two sides and the included angle, you can use these. It's just a matter of what what's given in the problem. Uh, also, uh, there is another formula that you can use. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if it's derived from the law of cosines. Uh, let's see if it actually says in the book. Um, hmm. So there is a proof in the book at the end of the book if you're interested in. We're not going to go through the proof. But what it does is it allows you knowing the length of all three sides, what is the area of the triangle? You don't have to figure out any of the angles at all, which is pretty interesting. Um, this S, that's also interesting, because if you, you added, the, added the lengths together and you divide by three, you'd get the average length of the average length of the sides. In this case, you're dividing it by two. And it turns out that, you know, for any A, B, and C, that the this S is always going to be greater than a, B, or C. If it doesn't, then it's probably not a triangle. It's probably values that won't result in a triangle, which I'm not sure how you would do that. So it turns out that this is always po greater than A, B, or C, and therefore each one of these terms here is positive. So you can get a positive, a, positive square, square root of a positive number. Okay, so first bunch of problems. Um, you're either given three sides or two sides in the included angle. And because in this case we've, we're given the length of the three sides, we can um, we can uh, use this alternative form to find the angles. And it doesn't matter which ones we find first. So in the interest of being complete, I'm going to show you how to use, well, first you're going to have to use the law of cosines. The second part, you can use the law of cosines or the law of sines. I'll do them both ways this time. 
uh, to find the final angle we'll just use the sum of the interior angles and you know I could kind of sketch this maybe just to get an idea I'm going to draw the the horizontal side to be the longest side and then you're going to have one side that's shorter like that and you're going to have another one that one side that's longer so if this is side C which is 72 this is side A uh, B which is 25 and this one is side um, A which is 55 so if those are the sides these are the angles that are opposite the sides so that's the terminology so they said to do the first the angle that's opposite the longest side first so we're trying to find angle C so we'll use that formula so it says the cosine of C is equal to a squared a is 55 plus so we're this is C so we do a squared plus B squared and then we subtract C squared and we divide by 2 times a times B And now that I've seen that direction, I will notice what will happen is because this is long enough, this squared becomes large enough to make the whole thing negative. And if you end up with the negative cosine being negative, that means you're in the second quadrant or that your angle is going to be greater than 90 degrees. So I think that's why you want to do this one first. Okay, so we get negative 1534 divided by 2750. So the cosine is negative 0 0.5578. So C, we just have to take the inverse cosine. of this number and like I said because because this is negative the cosine is negative in the second quadrant but because we're dealing with the triangles we're going to do angles so you need to make sure your calculator is in degrees inverse cosine of negative 0.5578 is 124 degrees so that's that angle here 124 now, to find B, we can do two, one of two things. We can use the law of cosines again. So we say the cosine of, let's say, B. It doesn't matter which one we find first, so I'm going to just choose B. The cosine of B is going to be equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared divided by 2AC. You know that from the formula here, but also this is letter B so the two other letters are the ones that are positive and the one that's negative is the same that corresponds to the the letter of the angle so we get the cosine of B is a a squared plus C squared minus B squared divided by 2 a C. So I'm just going to give you the final answer. You'll notice that this this positive here is going to be much greater than that negative part. So it's going to be a pretty positive number. So this is probably be the, this will be the smallest angle. Also because it's the smallest length. The smallest angle goes with the smallest length. So we get a close a number that's fairly close to 1, which means the angle, you know, the cosine of 0 is 1. So the closer you get this to 1, the closer you are to 0 degrees. So you take the inverse cosine of 0 0.9576. And because this is positive, it's going to be in the first quadrant. 
So we take the inverse cosine of 0.9576. So we get 16.7 degrees. And finally, A, angle A, is 180 minus B minus C, because the sum of the angles equals 180. So we can figure out what the one left over. So you have you have angle C, which is uh, well B, which is 16.7. You have C, which is 124. 180 minus 16.7 minus 124 is 39.3 degrees, and that makes sense because you know this number is a, this number is about twice that, and therefore and the angle is about twice the amount. So that that makes sense. Okay. Now the other way of doing it is instead of using the law of cosines again, we could use the law of sines. And we we solve for b here, so you'd have the sine of b over b. And the one side we know, both the side and the angle is c. So you'd have the sine of c over c. Um, if you solve for b, actually we're solving for the sine of b, because we want to find the angle. So the sine of b is just going to be the sine of c times b over c. So you, you break that over here to, from the numerator to the denominator, and the denominator to the numerator. So we take the sine of c, which is 124 degrees, which we got from the previous step, times b, which is um, what is b? 25 divided by c, which is 72. So the sine of 124 times 25 divided by 72 is 0 0.288. That's the sine of b. So we can find b by taking the inverse sine of 0 0.288 and you get 16.7 degrees which is the same answer we got there and then to get third angle we just do the same thing we did here now theoretically we could use the law of cosines we could use the law of sines we could use this um, to get the last angle. So as you find more of the triangle, you have more options. Okay, next problem. You're given the angle. Uh, it's in degrees and minutes, so we're going to have to convert that to, um, to a decimal in a second. So we're given the angle in the two adjacent sides. So we could draw this. It's going to be a pretty small angle. Um, and these two sides are pretty close to each other. So this would be B. That's angle B. This is side B. Um, A would be the longer of these two, so that's going to be that's going to be angle A. This is side A, and C would be this side, 30, and this would be angle C. Okay, so that's just a rough sketch. Now, in this case, because you're given um, side angle side and not side 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 you only have one choice of what to do first is to find length b and once you get once you get b then you can again you have more than one choice of which way to proceed so but the step one is is just finding this so we're going to um, we're actually not going to use this equation we're going to use the other ones the standard form so length b squared is equal to the other two sides, a squared plus c squared minus 2ac. So these are all lengths that are not the one that we're trying to find. And then you have the cosine of angle b. 
Now let's convert B to decimal because that's what we need for our calculator. So it's 10 plus 35 divided by 60. Or 60 minutes per 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour. Okay. So you take 10 plus 35 divided by 60. So that is 10.583. Great, so that's what we're going to use here. So we get b squared is equal to a squared, which is 40 squared, plus c, which is 30, minus 2 times 40 times 30 times the cosine of 10.583 degrees. So we get b squared is... So 40 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 30 times 40 times the cosine of 10.58333. So that's 140.8. And if you take the square root of that, you get 11.9. So this is 11.9. Which makes sense because this is this angle here, 10.583, is small, so you'd expect this side to be the shortest. I'd say there's a good chance that A is is uh, greater than 90 degrees. So that kind of leads us to the question, kind of. You know, you know, should I use the law of sines or should I use the law of cosines? Well, you can see that I now have all three sides, so the easiest thing to do here would be to um, use the law of cosines to solve for angle A. So we'd have the cosine of A, obviously this is going to be the longest side because we've got all three sides now. So we've got the cosine of A is going to be equal to b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. So this is a, so this is b and c. We subtract the a part. So we have b, we can look over at the figure now, 11.9 squared plus c, which is 30 squared minus 40 squared all divided by 2 times b, which is 11.9 times c, which is 30. Just look up here and find those. So let's see what happens. 11.9 squared. This is going to be close. To z. I mean, it's going to be, I would think this squared plus that squared is it's probably still going to be less than 40, but not by a huge amount. So you get negative 558, which you really can't, you know, you have to look at the relative to the denominator. So 2 times 11.9 times 30 is 714. Okay, but it is negative. So the cosine of angle A, since it's negative, it is going to be greater than 90 degrees. So A is the inverse cosine. So we're going to take the inverse cosine of negative 558 divided by 714. And I get 141.4 degrees. And then finally, we need angle um, C. So C is 180 minus 11.9, well, 10.583. Minus 141.4, so 180 minus 10.583 minus 141.4, we get uh, 28.0 degrees. Okay, so that's correct. So we've done one of each. We've done where you get in all three sides.
and you're given two sides and the included angle. So those are the two possibilities. Like I said, once you've, in the first case, uh, you know, what we did was once you found one of the angles, you can find the other angles using law of cosines, law of sines. If you know two of the angles, you can find the third angle using the law of sines, law of cosines, and the sum of the angles equals 180. When you end up with this situation where you have an angle and two sides and the included an angle, you can find the length of the opposite side opposite the known angle. Once you do that, uh, you probably could use the law of cosines to um, give you this angle and you don't have to think about what you know which which of the two solutions it is there might be an ambiguous case so to remove the ambiguity I would suggest using the law of cosines again to find the angle opposite the longest side and then once you have the two angles known you can find the third angle by subtracting them from 180 so that's really the only three cases two cases you have okay so um, this one you're given all four sides, three sides, and you're asked to find the angle theta. So theta, and it just turns out that that angle theta is the largest angle because it's opposite the longest side. So we can, <clears throat> it may be the interests of being consistent with what we've done before. I'm just going to redraw the things separately, the lamp, but instead of calling this theta, I'm going to call it A, and then we can say A is equal to theta later. So this is uh, this is angle A, and that's what we're trying to find. This this is side A, which is 4.5. We can call either these either, which doesn't matter. So we'll call this angle C, so this is side B, this is side B. Here's angle C, so this is side C. So C is equal to 3, and B is equal to 2. And since I'm trying to find this angle A, I use the alternative form. So I say the cosine of angle A is equal to B squared plus C squared, because that's not A. We use the other two letters. Then you subtract square of the length opposite the angle so that's a squared divided by 2 BC so that's when we choose and so now we plug in the numbers just look over here well actually look above we could just read them out of the chart so you get 2 squared which is B um, C is 3 a is 4.5 and because when we square 4.5 it's going to be greater than the sum of these we are going to have this angle is greater than 90 which you can see from the figure is the case okay so that's the cosine remember we're, we're calculating the cosine so you get 2 squared plus 3 squared minus 4.5 squared and that's a negative quantity and you divide by 2 and 2 and 3 so you get negative 0 0.604 so A is the inverse cosine of negative 0 0.604 so angle A inverse cosine of that and I get 127 degrees therefore theta is also 127 degrees. Okay, we'll do one more example here. Actually, two more examples. So let's read this thing. We have a 100 foot vertical tower. It's to be erected on a side of a hill that makes a 60 degree angle with the horizontal. Find the length of each of the two guy wires that will be anchored 75 feet uphill and downhill from the base of the tower. So let's put this on one page so we can see our picture a little better. So you can see this height is 100. We're ending with two triangles. This triangle here 
and this triangle there. So the distances along the slope are 75. So this angle here is going to be a little bit more than 90. This one's going to be a little bit less than 90 because they have to add up to 180 because that's a straight line. And they're saying this angle here is 6 degrees. So from that, if this is 6 degrees and this is 90 degrees, we should be able to figure out both this angle and that angle. So we'll know this angle We'll know this side, we'll know that side. So we'll know two sides and the included angle. So that shouldn't be too hard. We just have to do all the calculations. So let's let's draw a picture without every with all the extra stuff in there. So here it is. We've got a hill. We've got the tower, which I'm just going to show as a single line. The guy wire goes from the top to some point downhill and from this point uphill to the same the same distance so this distance is a hundred this length this is 75 this is 75 now the angle here is six is six degrees so that also means that if you draw a parallel line here this angle is six degrees and as a consequence, I'm just going to erase this and write in the answer so you can see what it is. So this, this angle is 96 degrees, and this angle is 84 degrees. This is 90 plus 6. This is 90 minus 6. If you add those two together, you, you'll get 180 degrees. So what we'll do is we'll call this, uh, let's call this A. We'll call this B. We'll call this B prime or B star. Just to and what we're trying to figure out what is we'll call this one C and we'll call this one D C star. So let's say A is equal to A star. They're both that vertical height. So this C is opposite the angle. So we should be able to just use the same equation. So I'm going to say c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of 96 degrees. And the second one is c star squared is equal to a star squared plus b star squared minus 2a star b star cosine of 84 degrees. And then we can get the number and we can take the square root. And this, I think, um, this should be longer than that because you've got a further to go downhill. That's my guess. Okay, so A is 100. B is 75. So the only thing that's different between these two is this cosine 96 degrees. Over here, C star squared is 100 squared plus 75 squared minus 2 times 100 times 75 times the cosine of 84 degrees. And I'm just stopping here, pausing, because since, you know, 84 and 96 are, are um, kind of symmetric around 90 degrees, they should have the same cosine. So I'm thinking that we should get the same answer for the both of these. That's my guess. So I'm going to pause just to make sure to see if that's true or not. Okay, just came up with my why that was a wrong reasoning. Yeah, they're going to be the same value, but one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. So, um, so anyway, 
let's just go plug the numbers in and get the answer. So sometimes you think of things and you're like, oh, they're the same, but they aren't. They're the same magnitude, but they're different signs. Okay, so I get 17,193. So we take the square root of that. You get 131.1. And the units are feet. Over here. So I just have to go back and change the sign of this thing. So you get 14,057. So C star is equal to the square root of that, which is 118.6 feet. So it is longer going downhill than uphill, which is what I thought originally. OK, now the final problem. Use the law of cosines or the law of sines to find one of the other angles. OK, so we have one more problem. We have a triangular piece of ground that has lengths of 500 feet, 900 feet, 1100 feet. Find the measure of the largest angle. So the largest angle is going to correspond to this 1100 feet distance. So let's let's go ahead and assign some number letters here. So I'm going to call this length A. I'm going to call this length B. Call this length C. And we're going to ignore that for right now. So because we're finding the angle, and we're also finding the largest angle, so it's going to be, um, you know, we don't, you're supposed to use the largest distance to get the largest angle first, which may be more than 90 degrees. So we're going to use the alternative form. So we're going to say the cosine of angle C, which is the angle opposite that, is equal to a squared plus b squared minus c squared. So the, the letters that are not c are a and b. Those are the positive ones. Then you subtract the one that's the same letter. And then you divide by 2 and the product of these first two things like that. So in our case, we have a, which is 500. We have b, which is 900. We have C, which is 1,100, divided by 2 times 500 times 900. So let's see, we get 500 squared plus 900 squared minus 1,100 squared. It's negative, so we're going to get an angle greater than 90 degrees. And divide by 2, divided by 500, divided by 900. And so I get the cosine of C is negative 0.166. And C is going to be the inverse cosine of negative 0.166. And I get 99. 6 degrees, so that's the angle. And we could find the other angles. We, if we want to find B, we could use the law of sines, and co sines or cosines. And then once we have B and C, we can find A using the law of cosines, the law of sines, or the sum of the angles, interior angles.